Over here on the bench I have a power window motor and mechanism removed from the vehicle. When it fails it gets removed and replaced as one part. Unfortunately, as an assembly it costs way too much money for my liking. So in this video I'm going to take it apart and investigate and explore what went wrong with it. Reality check! I requested a quote for this part known to Honda as regulator unit, this whole thing that you saw on the bench. I'm still choking over it. $340 plus tax is what I got quoted. $340. That's not going to happen. This is Honda's original service manual and this is what the, the service technician is instructed to do by Honda. If the motor does not run or fails to run smoothly, replace it. It meaning the whole unit, the whole $340 worth of part. Not an ounce of energy is given to looking at it, cleaning it, maybe maybe it's dirty or something. No, just replace the whole thing and let the customer pay $300 and whatever, whatever amount of money. Just charge the customer and replace it. The electrical components are here, just this much. A connector and a small motor when this motor is powered or 12 volt is supplied to its connector then it just doesn't run and doesn't uh, raise and lower the window and it is normally connected in both of these configurations so one of them is ground the other one is power and it really doesn't matter which one is which it must run both ways there nothing absolutely nothing and I've got good solid electrical contact from both wires. Let's see how many ohms of how many ohms of resistance we measure. Nothing. It says overload. It has an open somewhere. It shouldn't read OL overload. So electrical troubleshooting. I've removed three of these screws from this part here that looks like housing. Now, this rotor comes out, spinning it this way, and it looks like it could use some cleanup. Looks like something is deposited on it from the carbon brushes. But these two plates or blades here that form the terminals here or, or, or the connection, those blades connect and continue here. So I'm gonna check for continuity. Doesn't matter which one or where you start. Aha, so there is electrical continuity from this terminal here to this wire brush. That's good, but there isn't and there shouldn't to the other. That's how it should be. Okay, so that's one leg of the circuit. Uh, the other one then should be beeping when... Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so the situation is the carbon brushes might need to be bent inwards a little bit so they have solid electrical contact with the copper plates. What I'm suspecting here is contact with the brushes is incomplete. Because this is not spring loaded, this is a bent piece of a bent piece of copper plate here that's maybe yeah that's that's totally reliant on there's no spring. Okay just just the thickness of the copper to be springy and hoping that it pushes the carbon brush there into the commutator enough for sufficient electrical contact. Yeah, this one flexes forward and can be bent forward much the same way there. So, when I put them together we will have resistance and we will have continuity as it should. There. 25.4 ohms. Yes, I have continuity from pin to pin. I am certain that this has been fixed, problem is resolved, and if I connect it to the vehicle or connect it to 12 volts DC, it will run. Let's connect it one way and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's working. Now let's close that window and try it this way. Nice. And right around this time is the perfect time to ask the question, 
now that we know we have a flawless motor mounted inside the door and connected, why did the motor fail in the first place? It's important to ask this question because you have to be wondering, did the cause that caused the motor to fail in the first place, did that get fixed? Uh, we know we fixed the motor, we know the motor runs, but what caused the motor to fail in the first place? Just go with the story here. So, as soon as I plugged in the motor, I noticed something. I lowered the window, just like so, and the, mot and the motor did not stop at this point. In normal operation, like so, the window should stay at the height where the electricity is cut. But the motor kept running and the window ran up as if somebody was operating the master switch from the other side. Okay? So, I try this thing again. I press the button to make the window go down. I know it needs a little lubricating and everything. I'll talk about it later too. But as soon as I release the button, the window just ran up again. Okay? And that I found strange. Where is the motor getting power from? If dirt falls into this switch assembly, that can be shaken out and then that can interfere, say large crumbs or something can interfere with the operation of this switch. Normally you release the switch and the motor now is not being, the power not being supplied to or current not being supplied to the motor. But I noticed that the current was still supplied to it. So. This switch needed, needed to be cleaned and it's fairly straightforward. It has four screws here. Take it apart, shake out the crumbs, I'll show you. So once those four screws are out, it's obvious that the switch assembly is one unit. Once you've done prying these six snap connections really carefully apart, this is what's inside. Remember, Honda implies there are no serviceable parts inside nonsense. These white legs are coming through the circuit board and when the switch is operated this is the action that happens down below inside the switch and this whole thing comes out without just like so without any effort. I don't think you can break them with compressed air or with some gentle cleaning though done prying and nothing is broken that's good news because i really don't want to replace this whole thing for hundreds of dollars again possibly so this is how it looks like when they come apart now it's immediately obvious when i take this off that any dirt accumulating here falls out there and it's not really interfering with the switch take a look at where it pivots and how it pivots the pivot point is somewhere there either either which way. So, because it's all covered from debris above, it's extremely likely that anything would get stuck under. Take some compressed air and whatever is stuck inside, compressed air it is here and compressed air will also clean the open part of the switch where it gets clogged up or where the switching happens is of course here. This is a sliding resistor and see a shiny copper plate there it's a variable resistor once that one is done that was that was the original cause why this motor burnt out in the first place because with the crumb in the switch always always supplying current to the motor the switch the crumb or the whatever particle causing current to flow to the motor even when it should be off, like so, and that burnt off a layer from the carbon brush, that developed an open, they did not fix the original cause. The moral of the lesson, you make sure when you fix your motor, check the switch and check the operation of the thing. If, if the window stays down, the motor is not being powered, that's good. And it's exactly this lack of finding out the underlying cause is what's so very wrong with this Honda service manual that it's simply sending the technician to 
discard the motor if it doesn't run this is what the technician is told just throw it away the whole three hundred and forty dollars worth of motor and uh, and if uh, one burns out replace it with a second one that burns out too in 20 seconds put in a third one a fourth one and a fifth one and then finally tell the customer it can't be fixed there you have it masterful engineering from honda this whole power window motor and mechanism combo part mounts with just a handful of screws the motor itself mounts with three screws and the threaded inserts are inside this motor housing and the lower part of the mechanism mounts with two bolts the upper part has similarly two more bolts so this whole unit needs to be tucked inside the door cavity figure it out make it fit tighten these three bolts that hold the motor I'm trying to put my elbow through there through that hole in there so I can uh, hold the bolt here with uh, two fingers like so in terms of wrenches it needs a single 10 millimeter wrench open end closed end and a 10 millimeter socket but in terms of geometry it was a little bit of a fiddling two 10 millimeter uh, one socket one wrench and uh, a screwdriver Phillips number two right. goes into the socket in the corner just like so anchor end needs to be in there and then they snap together like so and one more point where it has to connect is there this has to go through like so the plastic snap connector lines up with the hole in front of it there and there that's good so let's start snapping it together that's also how it comes apart the switch assembly just like so good to go save yourself a couple of hundred dollars